I do think you need that behind you in the first instance, certainly to work in our building. And secondly, I come back to this, in a newsroom, a newsroom is made up of the, the, in no particular order, the news desk, the sports desk, the features desk, the photographic desk, pretty much by and large. There's also the online departments now as well, but most of them are dovetailed into one, into one sort of department now, if you like, as a whole, one of the sort of floor as a whole. Um, and I come back to it. My advice would be very strongly that whatever area you would wish to specialise in, I honestly think that um, you're better off doing a solid two years of news training first and foremost because that offers you the very foundation from which everything else works afterwards. If you show a flair or an aptitude or a desire to specialise in sport or features or, or crime or wherever, the opportunity will probably come. But first and foremost, it's best to, to, to do your news training. And I can give three direct examples without naming individuals. Um, in very recent times, we've taken on our own sports desk. We've had somebody who did that classical news training and has now come onto the sports desk. Somebody who actually came in as a sports trainee, which is unprecedented in our place, to be honest. It's a very, very rare opportunity, but he's very good. Uh, and then somebody else who did the postgrad course and then worked for, for a year, two years at Westgate Sports Agency uh, before coming into our place. I can just see that, although they're all excellent, I can just see certain things in the one that did the news training that just slightly stands him out a little bit. And that if there's a particular big story, I'd feel more comfortable giving it to him at the moment because I just feel that he's got the, the broader range of, of knowledge of journalism as a whole, if you like. Um, so that's, that's something I would advise very, very strongly. Um, but. I would also advise very strongly that if you, if you have a passion to specialise in a particular subject, then go for it because it really can be very, very rewarding. And as I say, it's not just sport. You know, you know, the people in our building who are music critics or who write on the arts or whatever, and you know, they're as passionate about their job as I am about sports journalism. It may not drive the paper sales or the online traffic as much as sport, but it still holds a pivotal role within within the organisation as a whole. So. Um, just emphasise for a last time, try and get your news training in first and foremost, but you know, show your interest, show your willingness, show your desire to move into any specialist field and go for it, because it can be incredibly rewarding, it really can. Um, just before I take any, Q any questions, just a very quick word about how journalism has changed in the digital age, because it really is, it's not that long ago that I was doing my traineeship myself, or it doesn't seem it, but... The change in the profession just in the last four, three, four years is quite extraordinary. Um, and I can see a situation, you know, evening papers, although they are local papers still, they're ceasing to exist in as much as being evening papers. They're all overnight prints now. So in our place, the West, we actually print the South, the South Wales Evening Post in Swansea, which is something that would go down like a lead balloon in Swansea if the Swansea public knew it. But it's true, because uh, they see us very much as a, as a Cardiff-centric build. Uh, Cardiff-centric um, newspaper organisation, but we, we print the, Swan, the South Wales Evening Post first of all, that goes off, off at about 9 o'clock. Then the Western Mail is printed, and then the Echo, because it's obviously a smaller delivery for the vans in terms of a smaller delivery catchment area, the Echo is then printed oh, around about 1 in the morning or something like that. Whereas in the past, in very, very recent past, the Echo was printed at 9.30 in the morning and sort of out on the streets and straight away. The idea behind all this is that um, the earlier a paper hits the streets, i.e. if the echo's on the streets at 8 o'clock, the more likelihood it is to be sold, rather than lose a window of it coming out there on the streets at about 11 or 12 or something like that. Um, it can be frustrating, but you know, there's a danger that you'll miss stories that you would normally gobble up first thing in the morning, but you know, you also have your website now to be able to um, to get these stories on. It used to be a situation where very often we'll hear, in sporting terms, we'll hear things first in our building, um, but we just knew that they wouldn't hold until the following day. And it just had to be a frustrating thing while you know the BBC or whoever were able to put things on their, on their flagship TV shows, and quite rightly so, they're doing it absolutely properly. Um, and we would have to wait till the following morning to print it in the paper, but that's all changed now. You know, you can get things online immediately and you can actually 
cross ref them to the following day's titles, if you like, by saying, you know, full and frank analysis of this particular subject matter, get tomorrow's Western Mail or get tomorrow's Echo or whatever. Um, but it's not just about that capacity, it's, it's about the change in general terms. I mean, with, with, with Facebook now, with, with all, the, all the social networking that's going on, um, we do live web chats. You know, we've had uh, Warren Gatland in to do a live web chat with us. We've had Dave Jones, the Cardiff manager, in to do a live web chat with us. We've had Shane Williams, we've had James Hook. We're trying to get Craig Bellamy in at the moment to do a live web chat. All these things are hugely popular. Um, and it's just changed all very dramatically, as I say, in the last two or three years. And at Media Wells, we were the first to to actually go to this multi multifunction multimedia newsroom. In the past, you would have very specialist newspapers. So, for example, in our place, you'd have the Western Mail in one particular department. You'd have the South Wales Echo in another particular area of the building. You'd have Wells on Sunday in another particular area of the building. And it's almost like never the twain shall meet. There was ridiculous competition between the three titles for the best stories. Um, whereas now it's, you know, it's just, and it was very hard to, to merge everybody together into one organisation. And it was particularly hard for me as head of sport because you've got big characters writing on sports journalism in this country and, and, and in our building in particular. And you had to sort of persuade them into actually become colleagues and acquaintances rather than the rivals that they felt they were um, there's been to the vast the vast majority have, have sort of brought into that ethos there's still one or two even now two years on there's still one or two barriers that need to be broken down but that's totally understandable that's that's the way it works and um, you know we've got that we've got our multimedia side and we do our own podcasts now it really has totally and utterly changed so I think that the training you're doing here from what he was telling me is is great you know I think you're moving with the modern times my personal view is there will always be a place for newspapers um, but clearly you know I will monitor as closely as anybody else does the situation that we have with the Sunday Times and the News of the Walls at the moment where you actually have to pay for the online content now I think that they've made like a seen something there and is trying to address it so we'll just have to monitor how that goes now over the next two years and that will be the next interesting sort of phase of journalism for me if you like. So I'm happy to answer any questions that you want to throw me about Ryan gigs or whatever. Just feel free to, to ask anything you want and I'll endeavour to answer them as best I can.